July 5th, 2017. Well, I meant to get back and do some, uh, some soils and, uh, other educational related videos, uh, yesterday, but I just didn't get around to it. Uh, it was Independence Day here in the United States, and, uh, I celebrated by working hard on the farm all day with a number of independent tasks, at the risk of a pun. Anyway, um, this video basically will be a closer look at soils part two, as well as a little discussion on plant species and uh, changing the dynamics of a given growing area, if you so desire. Um, so I guess uh, I just wanted to point out that it's been, uh, I think, about three weeks since I uh, mowed and raked this whole area in for mulch. And uh, you can see that the native species are growing back quite rapidly, actually. Things are filling back in. And uh, I'll walk us over there and we'll, uh, we'll take a closer look at it. Um, just wanted to give you an after effect. I did say this was an incredibly destructive process, but also uh, it's a great opportunity for you to see how well uh, nature can heal something and how quickly she can do it. So uh, let's go over and take a closer look at this uh, main area. All right, and uh, so here we are. And uh, you can see the forest floor is still uh, devoid of mulch, as you would expect, because um, I sucked up all the leaves, sticks, branches, and other debris. Um, but you can see that all of the ferns and the ivy vines and all the native species are popping back up and growing. And uh, I guess I should give you a shot of the canopy here. You can see it's quite a heavy canopy. There's one little opening in the sky there that gives kind of a noonday shot. But other than that, it's pretty well protected. Um, you can see that some dappled sunlight gets through. So there is uh, there's enough to support good growth, as is obvious by, uh, by the thicker stuff over there, like where I didn't mow. So uh, just as a reference, if you haven't watched the other video, uh, that taller, thicker stuff over there with rose bushes and vines and real dense uh, growth is what the rest of this stuff over here looked like um, before I mowed it, brush hogged it, basically, and uh, raked up as mulch for uh, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, etc. Um, it's just an easy way to harvest a, uh, a large amount of mulch quickly and uh, to bring in ind indigenous microorganisms as well as uh, a nice wide spectrum of diversity of species as mulch crops. So I basically just mow them under and uh, let it dry out for a day or two so that the vines and stuff like that don't sprout in the mulch on me. And then I come through with the thatch rake and rake it up. Anyway, uh, this is three weeks afterward and you can see things are growing right back in. And uh, by this time next year, I'm sure you'll see some rose bushes and barberries and other of the uh, longer perennial stuff uh, popping its way through and um, yeah anyway uh, this makes things easier for uh, making maple syrup to uh, for getting at the sap trees uh, for next uh, February anyway uh, we'll go take a look at another field um, and we'll discuss uh, changing from an overgrown field to uh, to another species uh, we'll get to that momentarily uh, Time to translocate. Okay, so here we are on another section of the farm. Um, this is another field. This used to be agriculturally farmed. I believe they had corn and uh, I'm not sure all what else they had in here. Uh, at one point they overdid it with atrazine, I believe. I'm not entirely sure it was atrazine, but they overdid it with an herbicide and killed the entire field and the entire field basically with a few minor exceptions, remained dead for about five to ten years. Uh, this was about 40 years ago now, and uh, in the last 15, I've seen a huge, huge recovery in this field, um, mostly due to the biodiversity and uh, a chance for those toxins to degrade over time, I guess. Um, it's really sad that they did that in this field because I would love to run this as a food production field um, it's got great access to sunlight. It's nice and open. It's about five acres. Um, but uh, knowing that they sprayed it so heavily with chemicals, I won't use it. Um, so all the soils I'm running on, uh, to my knowledge, have never been sprayed with any herbicides. And uh, I intend to keep it that way. Um, anyway, back to the main subject. Uh, here we are in a field that's overgrown. This is about, uh, well, it's technically 40 years of growth. It's really more like 
15 or 20 where everything really kicked in and started growing again and like I said in the last 5 to 10 it's really taken off and uh, and recovered quite nicely um, you can see it is very dense very thick uh, it's a combination of goldenrod and uh, vines I forget what these type of vines are and uh, cedars uh, the cedars do make a nice uh, decorative effect and also uh, they're an excellent wood for working with so uh, I'm mulling around a lot of the bigger cedars as I work through this field and I'm kind of remanaging it back to a controllable field that eventually I'll probably do uh, some landscaping related uh, cultivation and uh, possibly also some Christmas trees so um, just to give you an idea uh, last year I started mowing a section of this field not a very big section um, but I just want to point out that you can see in here there is no white clover in fact it wouldn't even survive because it's such a short plant um, and yet over here where I've been mowing it's pretty much all white clover um, I did not see this here uh, there was a little bit seeded over in this area over in here and either it's spread on the mower or it's spread by birds or something else I don't know but um, just in mowing I gave it an advantage uh, to take the space back and you can see it's actually filling in quite thickly and quite nicely and it's continuing to spread through here and uh, you'll notice that I've actually let it uh, let it go to fall into flower and produce seed um, here on the stalk uh, so that it will continue to reseed and uh, yeah, you can see those aren't quite mature all the way yet um, anyway so uh, easy way to do this uh, I would recommend a brush hog if you don't have a brush hog a mower will tackle this stuff but you got to do it carefully so you don't kill your machine and you always want to do a walkthrough and make sure there's no big stones or stumps that would uh, completely ruin a blade or deck um, probably should do that even with the brush hog really although they're uh, much more industrial anyway so that's a huge change and I plan to work this entire field in that fashion and so this section here that you're looking at where it's grown up a little bit again is just mowed about two and a half or three weeks ago also about the same time as I was working the other stuff this is actually about a week later than I was working the, the section where we were in last there with the maples and I just want to point out that already um, the clovers are starting to fill in here and uh, and take over so there is some resident clover in here and uh, I will run through occasionally and mow and be blowing that clover seed off into the next section and uh, I'll be harvesting this field for mulch for the next couple of years as it refines down and then uh, once it refines we'll have a nice area for planting like I said either Christmas trees or uh, 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 landscape related stuff uh, you know red bud trees or whatever whatever uh, I also want to point out the type of mulch we get out of this field while I'm here and showing you around this is a really nice mulch um, you can see it's like very coarse it's kind of like straw but a little coarser and uh, so when you put this down it really it wipes out weeds well and it maintains its fluffiness kind of and it lets water permeate down through nicely and it doesn't break down as quickly as like the uh, the leaf mulch was it which is an excellent uh, fertilizer also but you have to replace it much more rapidly than this stuff this has a lot more fiber and lignin in it and it's uh, more of a fungal food than a bacterial food um, but it works out great as a nice heavy dense mulch uh, so I guess that pretty much covers what I wanted to cover about uh, soils and changing species. So if you want to change species in a, in a given grow area, you basically just have to change the environment. And in this case, we've changed it from a very deep, tall environment to a very short environment where the light can get down in and, uh, and feed the shorter plants like clover. And clover being a nitrogen fixer, will continue fixing nitrogen in this field and continue helping to heal the soil. Also, when you do a mow like this, if you look at a plant, um, usually what you see on top, you can mirror that under the ground. Obviously, there's different root structures for different plants, so that's not, you know, 100% accurate. But if you have a plant this tall, 
chances are its root structure goes about that deep in the ground. So one of the things that happens when you do this is one, you, you kind of prevent, uh, you kind of do a kill back. You're doing a kill back on the top. The roots will do that on the bottom also. They will die back about the same distance as what you cut off the top or about the same percentage. So when you do that, you're actually providing a tremendous amount of nutrition in the soil as those root masses die off and start feeding the bacteria and fungi in the soil. So that's something to keep in mind as you go. And uh, it's a good way, a good rule of thumb to understand if you want to build soil more intensely, much more deeper than you would, uh, you would let your uh, grasses or forages or whatever grow much taller before you mow them under. And that would give you a much deeper um, organic and humic build in the soil. So uh, that's part of why I've let this field continue to grow a little taller and thicker and longer than you would ordinarily do before you brush hog it. Anyway, that said, I think that kind of covers the topic I wanted to discuss today. And thanks for watching Pharmacy Seeds Network. And I'll just give you a quick shot of uh, freshly first round of mowing on something that's thick like this. Right here. This was uh, freshly mowed. So I'll get one more mow and then I'll come through and rake the mulch out of it. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.